Are you shopping for a GPU for around $300 or less? Join the club. We all are. Entry-level PC gaming has gotten much harder as the price for admission has increased over the past few years. NVIDIA and AMD have really started to ignore the budget market, as the current cheapest offerings from both are over $250 and only offer 8 gigs of VRAM. In case you haven't heard, Intel has recently stepped in with what might be the best sub $300 GPU we've seen in years. And today, I want to talk about how I think this could be the start of change for the entire GPU market. Allow me to explain. First, this is the worst time to buy a GPU. Right after the holidays, all the prices have started to go back up again, all the Christmas sales and everything are gone. In fact, I just got onto the computer before I started recording this video. The RX 7600 is up to $260 and NVIDIA's RTX 4060 is over $310, and they both only have 8 gigs of VRAM. There is a third solution, and it's Intel. Calm down, I can already see everyone typing in the comments telling me, forget it, Intel's garbage, they didn't come out with a good GPU. Intel has recently released their new ARC graphics card, which is their B series or Battle Mage. The B580 released on December 13th, exactly two years, eight months, and 13 days after their first gen Alchemist cards. Intel's second generation card, the B580 that just released in December, comes with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, it's got a thousand megahertz higher clock speed, and it's got lower power requirements. You only have to have a 600 watt power supply or greater to be able to run these cards. If you don't have to spend as much on your power supply, your overall system cost is gonna be lower. You get all of those features for 250 bucks. Another thing that the B-Series card has given us is much improved driver support. When Alchemist, the A-Series A750, A770, when they came out, there was a lot of problems with driver support and Intel promised us that they would work on that from the very beginning, and they did. Over the past two years, they have improved driver support immensely in fact, I have the 750 and the 770 and I popped them into a system um, a couple weeks ago before the B-Series came out just to test and see how far they've come. They're great. Gamers Nexus did a full deep dive on it and uh, so did Hardware Unbox. I can link their videos down below. They both looked at like Intel's Arc series, uh, Alchemist series cards, and they said that they've improved drastically. So of course, the B-Series cards we're already ready with driver support and uh, they're just gonna take off from here. In fact, they have. And that kind of gets me into my downsides of the Battle Mage cards. Intel's cards are not perfect and there are a couple downsides even with the B580 that just released. First thing is there's still a couple games that have a few issues. Certain games don't boot right or not even at all. Marvel Rivals is one of the newest games that everybody seems to be interested in. It's kind of like an Overwatch style game if you ever played that. The B580 wouldn't even boot the game at first. It kept crashing on me, driver issues, uh, it, it just didn't work. What I had to do is I downloaded a program called uh, DDU Display Driver Uninstaller and I cleared the Intel drivers out of my system completely, ran that program to get rid of any extra files or anything, and then I re-downloaded the driver software from Intel's website. I had to do this twice, and I ran, uh, you have to reboot your system and stuff, so I rebooted the system two or three times also. Finally, I got it to work. I was able to play Marvel Rivals, no problems, but this isn't the uh, review video on the B580. This is just me telling you my opinions of why the B580 is so important to the market. I'm getting there. Another small problem with the Intel Arc series is it requires a motherboard that has resizable bar. So if you have an older system, I'm talking pretty old systems because I think um, a B350 or B450 AMD motherboard and higher, and then Intel Z690 and higher all have resizable bar, and it's all enabled in BIOS right from the get-go. There's plenty of uh, YouTube videos out there to be able to show you how to go into your BIOS and check to see if you have resizable bar, but um, just know that if you don't have resizable bar, the graphics cards will still work. You'll just get much less performance. So if you buy a B580 or an A-series uh, A750 or A770 and you pop it into your system, 
an older system thinking you're gonna get amazing performance and you see people online showing benchmarks of games that you're playing and you're not getting your performance, you probably don't have resizable bar enabled or your motherboard doesn't support it. Just keep that in mind. And of course, the final problem with the Intel graphics card series is that the B580 is completely sold out everywhere. Supposedly the B580 is going to come back in stock on January 3rd, so keep your eyes open if you wanna pick up one of those cards. Uh, I suggest you do it. If you're looking for a sub $300 graphics card, you can't go wrong. So really fantastic card. And in fact, if you can't get your hands on a B580, Intel's coming out with the B570. Yeah, B570 coming in uh, January 16th. It's a little bit more cut down than the B580. It's got 10 gigs of VRAM. It's got a 2,500 megahertz clock speed, and it comes in at about 220-ish dollars. So a little bit cheaper cost as well for those cut down variants. But you may be able to pick one of those up. Maybe the B580 is sold out. You can grab a B570 for a couple bucks less and still get almost the same performance. We'll have to see when the cards actually release what the performance difference is. Maybe it's not worth it. Maybe it is worth it. Uh, time will tell. Stay tuned. If you want to find out about these GPUs, more specific details as far as testing, performance, that type of stuff, I do all those types of things here on the channel. So make sure you get subscribed and come back and check out those videos when I get to put them up. The B580 is performing so well at a lower price. It costs $250. Now the A580 was $180 when it was released, but its performance was not even on par, e even close to what the B580 is. It couldn't compete with any of the entry level cards in Nvidia or AMD's lineup. Now the B580 is competing and sometimes beating those cards. It's also faster than its own last generation cards. The A750 and the A770, they were the higher tier card, but it's beating both of those. And the A770 cost $350 when it came out. Uh, and it required 225 watts of power or something like that at a eight pin and a six pin power connector. This only has an eight pin power connector. Pretty impressive to be able to give you more performance, require less power and cost less. The one thing that impressed me the most with this is the B580 is direct competition for the RX 7600, which cost $250 new. The 7600 XT, which was about $300, $310, I think, $315. And the RTX 4060, which is $299. And in fact, it even touches the performance of the 4060 Ti, which is $399. So really impressive that a $250 card comes within a stone's throw distance of a $400 GPU that Nvidia offers. It also offers better 1440p performance than the 4060 and the 7600. The thing that Intel's really surprising me with is as their resolution goes up, their performance uh, gap increases. So the 4060 and the 7600 and even the 770 and 750 from Intel, the performance is a little bit better um, or on par with them at 1080p. But when you switch to 1440p, the gap widens. The 7600 and the 4060 fall a lot shorter than the uh, B580 when you get to 1440p performance. So what you could do is pop this card into your system or build a system around it, and you could start with 1080p, save yourself the money and get a cheap 1080p monitor, and then later on, swap that out for a 1440p display and your system is still ready to play at that gaming resolution. If you build something with a 4060 or a 7600 and you jump up to 1440p, you're not gonna get as good a performance as the B580. I also want you to pay attention to this. This card is the entry level card in their Battle Mage series lineup. So we may still see more cards down the road in 2025. We didn't even look at the possibility of the fact that there may be a B750 or B770. I've heard of rumors there could be a B780 and it could compete with something like an RTX 4070. I really don't know what Intel's planning, but if they can do something like that, that'll really disrupt the market. It's really impressive that Intel is only on their second generation of GPU and they've already improved performance this much. Re remember, 
B series, Battle Mage series, whatever you want to call it, is only their second iteration of a dedicated graphics card. And it can only get better with driver support improvements and with time. Like I was saying, just remember, this is their entry level card. This is not their mid tier. This is not their high end. They can still come out with other options um, in different price tiers to compete with higher level cards. I know I've kind of rambled a lot today, but the point I'm trying to make is I think this is the start of something great. This is the start of a change to the GPU market. If you're thinking about getting a sub $300 GPU and you've been looking at Nvidia or actually I don't think Battle Mage is going to take away from Nvidia. I don't think they're gonna take market share. If you want Nvidia, you've already made up your mind. You're gonna buy Nvidia. So you'll pay up the, the $300 for a 4060 and you're gonna suffer. You'll get eight gigs of VRAM, you'll get less performance than something like Battle Mage, and um, you're gonna be upgrading down the road sooner. So a couple of my key points to wrap this thing up. Intel doesn't have to beat Nvidia or AMD. They just have to let them know that they're there. They, they are beating them. I mean, you can see it in the, the benchmark results for all these other YouTubers, 4060, 7600. Intel's competing. They're, they're setting the bar and Nvidia and AMD see that. I, one of my predictions is that at the beginning of the year, maybe January, February, March, you're gonna see prices of the two competitors' cards, their entry cards, dropping. Uh, maybe not so much Nvidia because they don't like to drop prices, but I think AMD is gonna be dropping their prices on the RX 7600 and maybe even the 7600 XT which comes with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, by the way. I'm always feeling hopeful. Any uh, disruption to the GPU market that plays in the favor of the consumer is good for all of us. So it's just something that you're gonna have to wait and see what happens and uh, be hopeful for just like me. I hope you enjoyed this different type of content for the video. I'm not doing a whole lot of editing. This is actually my setup, my camera gear for CES that's coming up next week. I just wanted to kind of test it out and do something a little different with the studio here. Uh, not my typical setup. This is my little, my little couch that I got so I can sit down and kind of just talk to the camera. If you like this type of content, let me know and uh, maybe I'll start doing more videos like this where I just sit down, give myself a couple bullet notes and then just talk and kind of give you my thoughts. Hope to see everyone at CES. I'm gonna to try to make some videos this year, pretty much like this, very simple, quick cuts, and just slap it together and send it out there so you can see what's going on out there. So if you do wanna see any kind of CES coverage, stay tuned. I'm gonna to try to publish uh, as many times as I can while I'm out there and as simple as possible. And uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. As I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next video. It's just what I do when I'm out, so try not to